Welcome to Budge Build Garage, everybody. On this episode, Nick drives the bus. Is that what I'm... <laughs> on a bucket. That's, that's what happened. On a bucket. Camera girl Julie was like, I could reupholster that in no time. So here we are with no seat. So you might be wondering why we, I, decided to buy a school bus. Uh, well, the answer is tiny house. So basically what's gonna happen here is Nick and I are gonna make sure that this engine and everything runs smoothly. Uh, Julie and I are going to be renovating the inside of it. Um, we'll keep you guys posted on that, but that's probably not as exciting as uh, actually making this thing run properly. So, but we'll keep you guys posted on everything. So far what we've done is we've ripped out all the old carpet. Right now it's just a bunch of this glue stuff on it that is taking much time to remove. Um, so what we've been doing is just using angle grinders and a wire wheel to get it all out. As you can see over here, which is looking a lot better. It's, it's not even rusted. I mean, this bus is 60 years old or so. Um, there's some spots that have a little bit of rust, but so far, uh, you know, everything's looking really good. So I'm excited about that. Um, we've ripped out some of the walls. We're going to be insulating these. We need to insulate, we need to rip out the roof so we can insulate the roof. Um, but yeah, right now it's basically just the flooring. We're going to build probably an inch and a half of insulation along the floor. Throw some vinyl flooring on it and call it good, I think. Uh, we ripped out this doghouse over here. Which means you can see inside the, uh, you can see the transmission and such. What we're doing today is going to be draining some fluid. So we're gonna be changing the oil. We might um, mess around with the clutch and such, but we'll see uh, as to where we get. So. Let's get to it. That way when they're like, why is it always Nick talking? It's because you're behind the camera and I don't know how to camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, either way. Um, supposedly, the clutch and the brake master cylinder were replaced about 10 years ago and then it just parked. Um, I have no reason to believe it shouldn't work. I think we just need to bleed them. I don't think they bled them very well. We had like no brakes. Um, the clutch is kind of iffy. Since Taylor and Julie removed this awesome trans cover, you can see right here. Let's see if you can watch it work when I do this. You see that? I'm gonna go ahead and pump it like I just did. We'll crack that bad boy open and get some air out. Let's see if the clutch just works a little bit better. A couple of pumps and hold. Go ahead and crack it open. Ooh, look at all those air bubbles. Cool. Close it. Let's do that a couple of times. I don't know, man. You might have a bad wheel cylinder or something. It's pulling a lot of fluid. But when we take it off to get new tires, we'll have them address that. It's not that big of a deal. Uh -huh. But you can see it all spinning and slowing out. Or maybe it was just way overfilled when they did the last checkup. I'm okay with that. Let's do the oil change. And by let's, I mean, you should do the oil change. Right. Oh, hey, check this out. This is super cool. So your power steering is hooked up to this awesome ram assist thing right here. Right? This whole hydraulic cylinder. Uh huh. Super awesome. So when it turns, the cylinder pushes this guy forward, which pivots this back, then it rotates the steering arm. So instead of like left to right, like your normal steering is, it's forward and back. When you turn, so when you turn your wheel left or right, it's either pushing it in or out, not left or right. Gotcha. Super awesome. I like stuff like that. Nick doesn't know how to camera, so hopefully this is in focus, everybody. It auto focuses. It's fine. Well, it might be on manual. Are you pushing or pulling? I'm just loosening it, dude. You had, you had to tighten it to get it loose. <laughs> no, you were loose on this one, dude. No, I was totally tightening it. Were you? <laughs> yeah, I can't actually tell what we're doing. <laughs> behind the camera. Things look different behind the camera than they do when you're actually working on it. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice working outside, dude. Should it work out any more often? Hey, dude. Aw, dude. You're gonna open now. full. He's gonna open full for sure. Is it? <laughs> <laughs> it fucking might, dude. Dude, when I checked the dipstick, it was like halfway up the dipstick. It was so over full. Oh, fuck. Because I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. What do we do? You're going to put the plug back in, and what you're going to do? Oh, shit, it's a plug. It's right over here on the other side. There you go. It should be fine. Let it, you know. Oh, dude, it's totally an overflow. Let's get a fucking overflow! You should totally put that plug back in it right now. Cool. So, yeah, that's definitely going to overflow if we kept going. 
Alright, well, let's uh... We got like an inch left. Dump that, and then let's do it again. There you go. Napa know-how. Oh, you're missing! Fudged up. That was good. Uh, I'm a genius and it's Ford based. Has your Ford small block filter. I swore I was like, it's gonna be a Ford for sure. So you're cool. See the rubber meets up perfectly. Uh -huh. That's what's important. Not so much the height. You can change that. But... So yeah. Drop of oil. Move that bad boy up. Put that bad boy on. And you owe me a filter. So we got the oil changed. Um, I think we concluded it takes about seven quarts of oil. So quite a bit of oil. Um, I also decided to replace the mirror up here, so now we have a driver's side mirror. Uh, Nick's on his way back grabbing just an extra little bit of oil so he can top it off. And uh, so, uh, yeah, we've got no mirror on the passenger side, but we do have one that actually functions on the driver's side, which I think is the only side that we care about. Yeah, look, you're pretty great. Nice. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit, top it off a little bit more, but nothing crazy. All right, now we just move on to the brakes. I think we're done with what we can do now. Nothing. All right. Just a little dribble. All right, Nick, what's up? Okay, so we have brakes on the driver's side front and rear. That's it, so front and rear, that's all. We're not getting any fluid here. We're not getting any fluid there. Um, the way this thing works is you have a fluid line, like on the back, for instance, it comes off of the T-junction where it gets fluid, it comes out and there's a wheel cylinder top and bottom and one whole line that connects the two. So we'll pull that off, see if we can get fluid through that, um, clean that out if we have to, and if we have to, rebuild it, and then we'll kind of work our way inboard. Um, same with the fronts, so we'll just start taking stuff off, and cleaning it out, see if we can make it work. Um, we have no problem building new ones if we need to, but we need brakes, so um, that's really our next job. I guess we can just get after it. <laughs> so, we're definitely Okay, like I was saying before, there's two wheel cylinders on this, one at the top, one on the bottom on the rears. Um, the line in is pouring tons of fluid, so that's good. So the problem lies in most likely this guy or the top wheel cylinder. Um, we're getting tons of fluid to the bottom, nothing to the top. So we pulled this off, which joins the two together. I'm gonna try and clean it, see if I can get some fluid to come in and out of it. I got some brake cleaner. I'm gonna put some safety glasses on, because I've gotten this in my eye doing this before. less than ideal. So I was hoping it was clogged and we could just fix just that. But it doesn't look that that's the case. And there's this guy. It's just this guy. Oh, it's got fluid in it. I really don't want to tear that thing apart. Well, that's life. I guess I'll just go put this back on. Okay, now we're really ready. All right, so what's going on now is uh, we decided not to brake. We decided to go get lunch, and uh, Nick pushed some brake cleaner through some uh, of the lines. What was it? The bleeder? Uh, oh, the bleeder and the line. But uh, the bleeder was the problem. Well, what we did is we, re we reinstalled the line and we left the bleeder off and then we put, uh, we just punched that. Ah, we <laughs> reinstalled the line, we uh, left the bleeder off, Taylor pumped the brakes and we just got this mountain of fluid shooting out and that's awesome. So I did a little bit better cleaning of the, uh, of the bleeder, put it back in and now we're getting good fluid. We gotta top this thing off. What we wanted to do, and I'll show you this really quick, here's a cool tech tip, is steal your wife's turkey baster. All right. You can take all the old gross fluid out of the reservoirs with one of these, just you know, like that. Let it go, put it in an old bottle, 
and then top the rest off. Honestly, when they're like, when you're at Jiffy Lube and they ask if you want to flush, that's all they're doing. <laughs> it's kind of a dick move. That's what they do to you. Don't pay for that. Do it yourself. It takes like two seconds. So now we got nice clean fluid. Um, when we go around and bleed all the brakes again, all the rest of the junk that's in it will be gone and we'll be good. So I'm gonna try and clean the front, the front brake bleeders out now. And hopefully this thing starts breaking again. All right, so you can see that. Yeah. Let's see if I push the brakes. We're gonna turn the fluid shoot now. We gotta right. bleed them all anyway, so I'm not too worried about getting there. Right directly in my face. Yeah, try to, you know, dodge it. Anything? Nope. Nothing. Okay. We might have a more serious problem there. Yeah, look, see it's not coming out of here? Yeah. That's what's a problem. So some of that nasty gritty stuff's coming out. I might have to soak this one. But yeah, that's a problem. That's clogged. All right, what's going on, guys? So this is the another day uh, at Budget Build Garage here. So what we're doing right now is yesterday-ish we uh, fixed, we changed the oil, uh, we fixed some brake problems. Uh, we got like four out of how do I say this? I guess four out of three out of four brakes working. Um, so we're gonna give it a test drive right now and see how she runs. Let's hop in the cab. What's going on, Nick? We got my sweet setup right here. Look at that. Some foam. This is the plush seat, you know? Anybody lucky enough to sit in this? Like, look at the lumbar support. We're good. Oh, shit, that's coming out. <laughs> We're good. All right, so. We got it bolted in with some wrenches. Yeah, this Allen wrench right here? Yeah, that's, that's quality work right there. <laughs> we're not going far, so don't judge us. Negatively. We're, we're in a safe environment. It's close course. Is GoPro's on? Oh, yeah. All right. All right, so we still need to rebuild the car. We're not quite making enough vacuum like we should be. Um, really, we just got to pull it off and redo that. won't be that hard. But the brake pedal definitely feels more awesomer. And, oh yeah, we also blood the clutch. Did you tell me blood the clutch? See how nice and reverse that went? Um, we have been idling for a couple minutes. I don't know if she's warm enough yet, but we're gonna figure that out right now. Oh yeah, huh? <laughs> That's the negative. That's the break. <laughs> Okay, so here, let me show you this. So this is that crawler gear I was talking about. So that is not first. That is first. Gotcha. All right, this might be too confident, but we're going for it. Woo! I'll make it look like I'm sitting.
really good, man. The brakes work. Like I said, like the carb. We need to do the carb like immediately. It's not giving enough. I think the squirter's clogged. I think the power valve's bad. I think everything about it. It's just bad. No accelerator pump, nothing. Because like I can't pull out in front of these people right now because we just. So we'll wait for the light. Um, the brakes I'm very happy with. We're not pulling left or right. Get the second immediately. See right there, fog's kind of bad. See, once she's warmed up, she doesn't mind the second gear starts in either, either. I think once we rebuild the car, it'll be a different car. Well, bus. Oh, let's do a diesel in. Yeah. <laughs> It's just a lot of fuel still left in it. It's still getting a bit of spark. We'll adjust that. We'll make that. We'll make that stop. That was badass though. Look, we're sitting now that we're off. And there's no fluid going. We're sitting at like 190. It'll probably creep up a little bit more, but that's a perfect operating temperature at this point. Funny gas. <laughs> yeah, if you believe that. I believe it. Do you? Yeah, it went up when I filled it. You know, it was dead empty when we bought it, actually, and you put in like 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. It's just a two-barrel car. I mean, it's a pretty decent-sized motor, but this thing might get pretty good gas mileage. <laughs> I mean, like for a bus. I don't mean like 30. I mean like... 10. Oh, shit, maybe 15. Yeah. Dude, 15 makes all the difference. Between 10 and 15, depending on how big your tank is, because when you're going through the desert, you want to, you know, have a decent range. Even if you're paying up the ass for the mileage, it doesn't matter as long as this thing will go, you know, 300 miles, or at least 250 between fill-ups. But we'll see, we'll address that. Ideally, we had a badass turbo Cummins diesel, like a 12 valve, but man, those things are pricey right now. So I'm thinking big block Chevy. Although I think we, this thing runs pretty good. Why don't we put the new carb on it, not the new carb, but why don't we rebuild this carb, um, adjust a few things, See if we can't get it running a little bit better. It'd be nice to keep this drivetrain in it for a while. I like it. I like the stick shift. It's pretty good now that we blood the clutch and everything. And the brakes, I think, will only get better when we improve the vacuum off the car. But, dude, night and day. It was like nothing at all on the brakes, and then suddenly they were locked, and now I have a brake pedal. Now I don't feel like I'm gonna hit the guy in front. I bet you Roger's like, why didn't we bleed the brakes there? Mm -hmm. You know why we did? Because I was at work. <laughs> yep. uh, remind me next time we drive this to roll up all the windows because they were vibrating like to the point of me being very concerned that they were all going to shatter. Uh -huh. That's pretty much it for this episode. If you liked it, go ahead and drop a like, subscribe, um, give us a comment, let us know what you think of the bus, man. I dig it. What do you think? Thanks. Woo!